You're about to experience the best moments of your paltry, miserable life. An official with Japan's nuclear regulator has criticized managers of the damaged plant in Fukushima and told them to ask for help if they need it. Toyoshi Fuketa visited the facility as workers there scramble to deal with leaks of highly radioactive water. Fuketa inspected the site where 300 tons of tainted water seeped from a storage tank. Crews with plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company detected the leak on Monday. They've been checking about 350 tanks of the same design to make sure no other water is getting out. Fuketa criticized TEPCO for not considering the possibility of a leak. He said the utility was ill-prepared, and he said the company should have been keeping records of radiation levels near the tanks on a regular basis. TEPCO officials told him they need many more workers to oversee the site. One of the commissioners says he doubts the system in place now is capable of preventing more leaks. There's no record of monitoring? No, we didn't keep any. So you only have the memories of your workers. The regulators have instructed workers to install water level gauges on all storage tanks to warn of any possible leaks. And they ask the operators to consider storing the wastewater elsewhere. We want officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company to have the courage to admit the limits of their efforts instead of simply repeating that they are doing their best. They should speak up about what they need. Fuketa says TEPCO officials should voice any other concerns they may have about funding their operations. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi power plant is struggling to stop radioactive water from leaking into the sea. Tokyo Electric Power Company has started pumping out highly contaminated water built up inside an underground tunnel. The tunnel is about 60 meters from the sea, near a building housing the number two reactor turbine. TEPCO estimates the tunnel contains 210 tons of contaminated water. After the water is pumped out, it will be filtered to lower radiation levels. It will then be stored inside steel tanks. TEPCO has known about the tunnel water since immediately after the nuclear accident in March 2011. Representatives say they only recently realized the water is leaking. TEPCO must also pump out an estimated 15,000 tons of highly radioactive wastewater from all underground tunnels. But the utility doesn't know when the work can be completed. Workers at Japan's crippled nuclear plant are getting ready to dig deeper into a worrying mystery. Radioactive water has leaked from at least one storage tank on the Fukushima Daiichi site. So crews are preparing to investigate how it got out and how far it spread. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company said earlier this week that about 300 tons of highly radioactive water had leaked from a tank. They fear the water flowed through a ditch and into the ocean. The tank is made of steel plates bolted together rather than welded. Workers checked the joints and surfaces visually and found no abnormalities. They don't know how the water got out. Company officials suggest the water leaked from the bottom of the tank, soaked into the soil and mixed with groundwater. Crews plan to dig holes next week around the tank and a nearby ditch. Then they'll analyze the soil and groundwater. They hope to trace the path the water took and figure out how far it spread. Company officials said Thursday that crews had also inspected similar tanks holding radioactive water. They said the findings showed two of those tanks may have leaked. TEPCO workers will also start removing soil soaked with radioactive water. Company officials said earlier this week that 300 tons of highly radioactive wastewater had leaked from a storage tank. TEPCO engineers say the water may have soaked into the ground near the tank and some may have flowed through a drainage system into the ocean. 
Workers plan to excavate about 50 centimeters of soil and measure its radiation level. If the level is high, they'll keep digging until they reach uncontaminated soil. But engineers said they're not sure how much water has seeped into the ground or where it may have gone. They said the presence of underground cables may hamper excavation efforts. TEPCO officials said workers will begin digging in locations where no cables are buried. But they said they don't know how much soil they'll be able to remove. We're going to need a bigger boat. Yes, it is. I mean, first of all, one has to define what a storage tank is because at the time of the incident in which three reactors uh, had a meltdown situation, of course, many of the storage tanks and storage facilities were improvised. In fact, they used the reactor containment as a storage facility for water. They encapsulated the fuel cores in water. And, of course, that's what's happening is the intensely radioactive fuel is beginning to migrate into the water, and the water is seeping and migrating out of the containment. This, this plant was not only subject to a nuclear incident following a tsunami, but also, of course, it's reckoned that it suffered quite severe earthquake damage as well. So this contaminated water is in the ecosystem, effectively. That's got to have serious consequences, doesn't it? In the immediate ecosystem, and of course it moves beyond that. Once it comes out of the groundwater into the marine environment, then tides and currents will take it along. And the sort of scenario is rather like this, that you get these very fine oxide particles of fuel, each intensely radioactive, being carried along the coastline, the tide taking it in, so you get the intertidal debris. You know, we've all walked along beaches where there's plastic cups and shopping bags, etc., just spread around. That intertidal debris is radioactive. It dries out. The onshore breeze that comes every day blows the radioactive dust, these very fine particles, onto local communities, and those communities receive an exceptional dose. I mean, the, the level of the contaminated water has been described as something like 100 millisieverts, 100 units of radiation per hour. Well, actually, in Europe, in Britain in particular, to get the emergency dose of 5 millisieverts, that would take about 3 minutes of exposure. So it puts it into context. It's pretty active, pretty intense, and it's out of control. The operator Tokyo Electric Power, uh, known as TEPCO, was criticised for shortcomings ahead of the Fukushima nuclear plant disaster back in 2011, which, which you mentioned, which followed an earthquake and a tsunami. Has it done enough since then? And are there shortcomings in general in the Japanese nuclear energy sector? I would say, very certainly, TEPCO has lost my confidence, if not most of the nuclear community's confidence, in its ability. And also this, this scorn, if you like, for this lack of expertise, lack of clear management and action also applies to the old regulator, the Japanese regulator, NISA, which was virtually disbanded after the Fukushima accident. The problem is this. TEPCO has really reacted on the hoof, so to speak. It's simply not planned what the longer-term effects and consequences are of the expedient actions that it took way back in 2011. And what we're seeing today with this leak is a consequence of not thinking through the immediate containment actions, flooding the reactors, for example, that they took way back in May and June of 2011. And that's the real problem. They didn't think ahead. And, of course, they're left with an inaddressable situation where there's not much you can do once this radiation gets out to the marine environment. Can I just finally ask you, do you anticipate some kind of international response to this? Clearly, the international community all have a vested interest in ensuring that the waters around them aren't contaminated. What can the international community do? Well, the first thing to do will be a sort of paperwork exercise where the International Atomic Energy Agency will effectively redress the accident classification of one, the least accident that uh, TEPCO have actually put on this particular plant. I would say this is going to be an accident level five release. And then the local community and the international communities need to look at what sort of controls you put over the marine fish stocks that are taken in those waters. So it looks like we're in for a long term here. Remember, three reactors went down. Each reactor had about 120, 130 tonnes of fuel. That's lacking any containment. It's beginning to drift into the marine and terrestrial environments the situation is 
that the radiation and the radiological effect in terms of health harm for that fuel would go on for hundreds, thousands, uh, if not tens of thousands of years. So this really does need addressing rapidly to stop that long-term consequence occurring. A memorial service has been held for the man who helped bring the Fukushima plant under control after the 2011 nuclear accident. Masao Yoshida died of esophageal cancer last month. The former plant manager was remembered at a gathering in Tokyo. Yoshida took the lead in trying to get the plant's troubled reactors under control right after the tsunami struck. He defied orders from TEPCO executives to stop injecting seawater to cool one of the reactors. More than 1,000 people attended the ceremony. They included Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and government officials. TEPCO President Naomi Hirose vowed to follow up on Yoshida's efforts to put the crisis under control. You took responsibility as a leader and did your utmost to deal with the crisis. We'll always remember how you tried to protect the land and people of Fukushima. We'll remember how you acted with a sense of responsibility, pride and courage. An in-house investigation later accused Yoshida of failing to take measures against huge tsunamis. Three years before the accident, TEPCO officials had warned him that an unexpectedly large tsunami might occur. Yoshida reportedly responded saying the related research was inconclusive. One day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. Only two weeks are left before the International Olympic Committee decides which city will host the 2020 Summer Olympics. Tokyo, Istanbul and Madrid are competing. Members of the Tokyo Bidding Committee took part in a ceremony to reaffirm their commitment to the Games. About 800 people involved in Tokyo's bid attended the ceremony. High-profile politicians were on hand to support the campaign ahead of the IOC meeting in Buenos Aires. There are only 15 days to go. I hope the Japanese people's support for our bid will reach Buenos Aires. I'll be traveling to Buenos Aires. Let's all join hands to support the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Tokyo's bid has so far earned high marks in terms of financial soundness and public security. Things. Japanese government is now admitting it's not and has not been able to control leaks from a damaged nuclear power plant. Government officials are expected this week to upgrade the leaks to a level three times more serious than the current level. And as environmental specialist Gary Chittin reports, that announcement is making waves on this side of the Pacific. A flyover of the Fukushima power plant reveals workers trying to stem the flow of radioactive water oozing from huge storage tanks. Leaders of the Tokyo Electric Company admitted to reporters that some 300 tons have leaked. This comes following news of other leaks, accidents, and growing radioactive levels in the Pacific near that power plant ever since it was damaged by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. The announcement of a leak that big going on for that long came as quite a surprise to people 4,500 miles away here on this side of the Pacific, even the experts. It was a surprise to everybody. We weren't aware of it. Officials at NOAA's lab in Seattle have been monitoring the event since it occurred, and they're closely watching testing of fish tissue and water that have shown signs of Fukushima contamination on our coast. Uh, we were out today and we got some pinks and some silvers. Recreational fishermen in our area are watching too. I don't feel there's going to be a problem with salmon, but the tuna, albacore tuna, might be a problem because they do migrate around. He's right, say federal scientists, but they add so far, levels in all fish are extremely low. Radioactive l levels that are very low in these tuna, uh, orders of magnitude lower than there would be any concern for health of human consumption. But as information and concern for the leaks continue to grow, the question is, how much more can the ocean take?